Bill. What's happening? Look Chilling. at that. Matching shirts. Hey, hey, we Let's match. Team. Hey, what a team. we're a team. What a, what a guy. We're a team from the AL East. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? We saw the pre stream gang going full on P on YouTube before PSG. we got on. PFG, PSG. Very Someone nice. said you invented the app, and I would I say maybe when it comes to like mozzarella sticks or something like that, yeah. You know, computer apps, phone you just, apps. Uh, you just can't, uh, you can't be happy, can you? That's why we don't have nice things. Phil, what's the difference between an app and a uh, program? Um, an app has more letters in it. Application. Is that right? Yeah, there's more letters. Maybe I meant appetizer. Appetizer, that's true. Could be something yeah. you eat. Yeah. <laughs> what um an application what is it? A, a program is not you can't enter it and use it as a uh I don't know, is that right? I, I don't know. I'm asking you. You you know all these things. Oh, you didn't know the answer? I know all the answers. I know everything. So that's what it is then. I don't I let me let me put it this way. I'll put it yeah. as like grandiose as I can. I like I don't ask you a question. Without, that, that you don't know the answer to? That I don't already know the answer to. That's why I don't get that many questions. Huh? <laughs> nice. <laughs> saying, that, so you, saying I don't know nothing now? I didn't say that. I said that many. You you inferred that I don't know I, nothing. Well, I don't get a lot of questions from you, so you must not know a lot of things. I mean, I totally agree that I don't know nothing, but that's why we have people that know more than I do in positions to be able to tell us, and that's what we have later today. That's right. Stevie Fresh is coming on, and uh, he's going to talk about pin to pap. On uh, he's going to use two specific balls too: the two, the outer limit pearl and the um, the radical radical conspiracy. Radical 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 conspiracy. If it's very right, which I used last night in league. Did you? Oh my god! First you time used, I used an a sim, a strong a sim ball, a solid a sim in league last night. Mm. I drilled it oh. pin down, which I invented. You drilled it pinned down. Yeah, pinned down. And you also pinned brought down. the surface up, you said? I did. I, I hit it with a little bit of polish, just made it a little, little gleamy, not, uh, nothing dramatic, because I didn't want to alter it too much. I wanted to see what I was going to do, and I was able to throw it. Um, you know, it was good. Uh, my first shot off my hand, I threw it in the gutter. <laughs> well, hopefully that was practice. No, no. First shot in com com competition, I threw it in the gutter. Yeah. So, hmm. You should think about doing like ball reviews. You know, I can just really picture the ball reaction you had down the lane. It's like, hey, how is that? Good. Yeah, right. That's it. How, how's how's that meal? Salty. Salty. That's <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> you can't make it taste good without salt. <laughs> Cheating. Um, All right. I'm posting the link. Yeah, let's talk about the link. The link goes up, <clears throat> and then you enter into the link. Put your name in there. Nick has a wheel right here that he, that he manipulates with his other hand from time to time. Yeah. Uh, and um, and we, we, we spin it. And uh, if your name is chosen, you get the gift that is on the, uh, on the wheel. Now here's yep. a catch. There's always a catch still in the show, the podcast at the end, when you pick your name, you have the option to keep, the, the, the gift that came up first or let them spin again. For example, you could have a spin and it says a uh, free pair of shoes. For instance, For totally instance, random, totally random free pair of shoes. And then you say, no, I want something else. And, and he spins it and uh, you get a grip sack. That could happen. And then you end up with the grip sack. Totally random scenarios. Yeah, hypothetical. 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 No. But we should uh, uh, give this thing a spin to make sure it's working. Yeah, right, let's do right? it. Let's. Uh, what are you going to pick? I'm taking. Uh, I'm taking new shoes. I think you uh, called new shoes. I'm going chamois again. I always go chamois. I'm a chamois guy. Um, oh, oh, look at that chamois. Oh, that's not back. The sack. shoes. And grip sack. So yeah, get your entries in. We're gonna post the link a few more yeah. times, like we always do. And at three o'clock, we will approximately three o'clock. We four will four o'clock uh, Eastern. Four o'clock Eastern. 
two o'clock central. Mm -hmm. Oh, three o'clock. <laughs> o'clock mountain. I think the time change has got you all messed up. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then um, and then we'll we'll do that. But and then we're gonna have uh, let's see, we'll talk about some new product first. Yep. Then we'll do a top five. Yep. Uh, and, we'll, and then we'll... and then Steve Steve Fresh Hour come on and educate all of us. This is pretty cool. Um, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what what he has for us today. You know, it's always like uh, there's gonna be a bit of information in there that I think is monumental and might open some eyes. Yeah, yeah something that perception versus reality could come into play here, right? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Hence the name but of the show. We're all about the numbers. We're all about the data. That's all we work with. <laughs> we don't make things up. Right. We actually <laughs> like, uh, do studies. Balls. We do studies. In a lab. and with, with laboratory guys, which are called scientists. Scientists, right. Or chemists. And what, they, and what do they always want to eliminate? Variables. Variables. Good. And they all want to have pocket protectors. Right. Because... You, sometimes you like to write a lot in one. Yeah, they have to have that. that. Yeah, yeah. Putting it behind your ear as a scientist is not cool. So, no. uh, but yeah, we That's eliminate not... variables. We use uh, the scientific method mm -hmm. to, to do testing, and we have people that have that in their name as their job, like chemist, physicist, engineer. Not like uh, how'd I get here? Post turtle. <laughs> And nobody knows. And nobody knows. So anyhow, um, Steve comes on. He's going to talk a lot about this stuff. And and you know what? He's uh, he's really smart. So he's got a lot of good stuff that he wants to talk about. And today is going to be interesting because it's pin to pap, which everybody asks about. It. And I think you're going to have some, like you said, eye opening uh, information. I think so too. So let's get on with the show. Let's, let's start get on, talking about on with the show. Da -da 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 Phone balls. <laughs> I guess the first question is what everybody's asking right now is what is the hammer effect? Da -da -da. And that's the thing we, we we posted for weeks on the hammer page. We led right. up to it. We teased mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. You know, normally when we do something like that, we have something pretty pretty impressive coming. stuff. Yeah. So it all starts with the core. Let's start from the inside out. Take a journey with us. So, <laughs> <laughs> what? It's for Nothing. the ASMR crowd, you know. They want just like a nice, uh, like yeah, those nature shows, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, Huntsman Core, brand new core, but it has significant stuff from cores that are already in the line, like Black Widow and Vibe. It took the two best things about those yep. cores and and built them into one. It looks like, right? Yep. This is a massive core, volume wise. Mm -hmm. uh, numbers on this core you got those numbers handy i do i do it's the 2.47 mm -hmm. point zero five zero and point zero one seven is the intermediate diff. so it's got a high diff and a lower intermediate diff mm -hmm. 2.47 is sort of a lower rg yep that's pretty low pretty low compared to what the black widow was it was uh 2.50058 and 016 Mm -hmm. um, and the Black Widow had um, a higher, a higher in, a total diff and a lower intermediate diff, not by much. Not by much, yeah. Right, and the, but the RG was different, you know. Yeah. And this is also have HK twenty two with a, um, a a different additive package. They call it the cohesion additive package. Mm -hmm. um, it's amazing that this is a shiny ball, but it 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 has like a gripping effect. To the lanes um you know which is a, which is cool because you know shiny balls that hook are uh, always popular right you want the ball to retain energy you want the ball to retain yeah. axis rotation down the lane and but shiny so balls sometimes yeah. over skid and then and they don't recover right exactly that's what you're saying so that's exactly what this ball doesn't do it uh it's shiny ball gets through the front but it has that uh cohesion effect uh tracking to the lane which is pretty cool mm -hmm. Um, I saw the ball, you know, I saw some videos of the ball going down a lane. Uh, it's pretty impressive. I and was it looks very impressed. really good. Yes, and we'll get to that on the next slide with this. It's the first four-color ball of its type. Never been done before. Now, there have been bowling balls out there where <laughs> colors have mixed, right? Exactly. That's what colors do. They mix and make 
other uh, colors the, other colors so i learned that in finger painting in kindergarten yeah. where you know we, for instance someone said well the hammer epidemic had like seven colors it's like well yeah technically sure but it yeah. started as three colors blue yellow there's, there's only burgundy. seven primary colors by the way right so what happens when you mix yellow and blue well apparently not everybody knows that because there were people on the internet saying there were other five color six color balls yeah that's the result of two primary colors mixing together um I, that's what i love about the internet you can just say whatever you want they should have a hand come out of the computer and just slap you on the side of the face when you do stupid things like I that. I mean, if, if there was like already five color balls, why aren't there more of them? Because sometimes there's no rhyme or reason to those colors actually mixing and creating new colors. Well, that's why we don't do some colors because they mix and they make brown. Yeah, brown. <laughs> Show well, a hands. Show a hands. Favorite brown bowling ball of history. Anybody? Anybody? Brown? Uh, I don't, just, I don't, I don't think so. Just the Grizz for me. That's the, the best. Grizz and maybe the, uh, the NRG for track when we did it. That was burgundy though. That was, yeah, it was more of a burgundy. burgundy. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. The Grizz is where yeah. it's at. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's so, funny is like that ball was uh, the, the most forgotten ball pretty much in history, right? Oh, the Grizz. Yeah. And I found one a long time ago. This is like uh -huh. mid two thousands and I drilled it. Right. And I made a video for the Grizz because I thought it was just the most ridiculous bowling ball. It was a brown bowling ball with, know, a, bear, brown. with a bear, bear paw logo. Yeah. yeah. And I made a video and uh, it blew up and uh, people are just all attached to the Grizz now for no apparent reason. No one actually had that ball really. Right. Uh, but just, you know, you just yeah. take a ball out of obscurity and you right. make it into this local folklore yeah. legend. <laughs> so we have color wheels had we don't have that anymore because we have a computer now what? uh yeah well we could put two colors in one on each end of the of the wheel and it would show you what the combinations were going to look like mm. you know so there were certain things we had sections cordoned off that you never went in because they would have browns in there somehow it would look you know muddied up mm -hmm. uh and it's a color wheel i mean it's pretty cool it is. Like, um, I might like, yeah, still like, have it somewhere in the office. I don't know if I have it here. So how there. do you like make like certain bowling balls? Say you want to make a ball that has like white and black. How do you keep them from mixing and make gray? Like, is it all in the shot timing? What's all? Yeah, different? it's a shot time mostly, but uh, and that's that's primarily what it is, the shot time. Okay. Yeah. But you know, I always tell people you have white with milk and brown with chocolate, and you mix them together. You don't get white and brown. You get chocolate milk because it's mixed. Yeah. So, so what we do is when we put those colors in, we don't mix it. Mm. So they sort of, uh, and there's different ways to do it. You can have um, blotchy colors or you could have um, swirls. And that's just I mean, a matter of how they treat the shot times. That comes down to the chemist, though, because they know what color the properties. The chemical are, guy. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And what yeah. kind of additives maybe uh, resist each other from doing Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Yeah. Stuff. yeah. Densities of the material going in. It's different. Yeah, it's kind of a like lot oil and water scenario type Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's why we have people that do that for a living. And they're called the chemists, scientists, yep. physicists. They're here full time. <laughs> they have jobs. They come to work every day. Yeah. They get their mail here. A lot, a lot of companies <laughs> don't have those people working for them. We got people. Um, you want people? We, we got, got people. people. And we got the right people. Mm -hmm. So that's how we get the cohesion additives. That's how we get HK22. That's how we get the Huntsman core, you know, but you don't just go down the aisle like I used to at uh, Home Depot and say, oh, that'd make a good core. Let me buy one of them. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, my early pick for best ball 2024 is that a hammer effect. Wow. You're going People early. Me, like, it's I'm going early. It's, March. Yeah, it's, it's March. It's like, yeah, there's nine months left. I'm like, yeah, I know. Yeah, you don't know. I know. I'm Nick Stradamus. Nick Stradamus. I like that. That should be a shirt. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to make that a new shirt. It's just going to be like my face, but my head's going to have like a gigantic, like pinky in the brain type thing where you got to have that big hat. They wore then. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah, it's big, it's hat. big hat. Big hat. Funny, funny, big hat. That would be perfect. Turd. Your face with the Nostradamus hat with the fur on it. Um, Turd Ferguson. That's big it. honey. Next ball. Oh, oh, not urethane. Well, it is your thing. Your thing, man. It's seventy-eight hardness because um, 
Somebody picked that out of the air. <laughs> could have been 79, I mean 77. Yep. Nope. 78. 78 because um they thought the balls got softer. Right. And they said if they get softer like we think they do, then they'll be okay. And then then this will still be above the legal limit because they that we think they drop five degrees, five points five, rather. Five to six points. Five yeah. to six points. Um right. Amazing how this is how scientific method works. If you start with a bad assumption, then everything you build on is incorrect. <laughs> Just want to throw that out there. Yeah, it's like building your house with a foundation on sand. That's right. You know something's going to go wrong. And it's like any scientific test or any scientific study, you have to have the first part of it right. And then you can build off that. If the first part's wrong, you'll have an answer at the end. Mm -hmm. Lo and behold, that answer will be will be wrong but here's the other part of it if you keep saying it enough times you'll even believe it right, right. doesn't make a that's, fact no that's why Tell. we have um that other ball um that we have that purple ball and you know what it's still legal it's still legal still legal doesn't get soft that. Does nope. not get softer it reads softer sometimes when you have contaminants on the surface Clean the contaminants, and, and guess what? It's back to you the magically. Number. You magically right. harden it back up. How about that? That's right. When I clean it with this, with this paper towel, it 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 reacts with the chemical composition of the ball. My mm -hmm. paper towel does, and makes it harden back up. Yeah. So paper towels make bowling balls harder. So you can't have paper towels on toys. We anymore. just did a scientific study. Yeah, we just did it, not in and a lab because that's a you know lab. irrelevant, but yeah. you know. Anyway, going back to Black Hammer, it's 500 yeah, grit, 78 hardness. Obviously, it's PBA, you know, made for the PBA tour. You know, those guys Period. can't throw it. But for the guys that love urethane, that love Purple Hammer, if you want something that's a step down, like a little three to four boards less, yeah, right, yeah. right in there, mm -hmm. this is the ball for you. You know, and, you want to stay in that same zone, not move right. in. Mm -hmm. But this ball would be pretty, pretty much fit into that trilogy if you wanted to have um... – this ball, the not urethane ball, and then the purple um, hammer, you could probably uh -huh. put together a pretty good arsenal. Yeah, um, I brought I, that to league one night. It's uh, those three called. Balls? Yeah, I had the the new blue, I had the purple, and I had the black hammer in my bag. And uh, the title was "How to Win Friends and Influence People." People by Nick Smith. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing you do is take all three out and put them on the rack. Yeah, you can't do that there though. That. Uh, yeah, you can't put that many balls in the rack. No, 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 no. Yeah, nobody nobody yeah. offered to buy me a beer that night. I don't know why. I wonder why, right? <laughs> it's my three-ball arsenal. Awesome. Po politics, I guess. I don't know. I guess. I guess. I threw that new blue on Monday, by the way. You threw it? I did. I went and um, I went and practiced a little bit with Brent, my buddy Brent. Um, you got new we friends? Were, I, I'm, I told you I was getting new friends. I told you that two weeks ago. <sighs> You have okay, now, so, you're moving down now. The more I add, the further down the totem pole you get. Eventually, there's going to be no pole under you. So there you go. Um, I'm pretty upset right now, but go on with your story. So uh, can't wait you, to you put it. out a, a sport pattern, you know, try to uh, emulate the um, the Nationals. Um, and I, I brought that ball in because, you know, I wanted to make sure I had that option because in case we make one down the road, um in time for nationals i i might uh might want to do that so i tried it and it, it worked really well it played out up the gutter um the cool thing about it is it didn't ricochet down lane that's what you use your thing for to control the back end yeah. and then um what happened was it, it it rolled up really nice i left a bunch of seven pins but i could have adjusted the surface and probably gotten them out without having to move out of that zone you know. I mean, you're the you're the prime example of the kind of bowler that should be using bowling balls like new blue, you know, yeah, slower exactly. speeds, slower revs, Absolutely. like to play, need yeah. help playing straighter and not have overreaction. I agree 100%. Um, yeah. I might stick that in my bag for Thursday night because I play, it hooks a little bit Thursday night, but we'll see. Um, and we'll talk before we're done. We'll talk a little bit about the feedback I got from Nationals. Okay, nice. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Let me, uh, let's go on to the next ball. Say, yeah. Yeah. Haters. You got haters, Phil? Hater, haters are going to hate. Yeah, we do have haters. <laughs> uh, <laughs> some of us have more haters than others. Um, and some of us hate more than others. But anyway, um, deviate. 
HK22. All new everything here. Right. It's a Havoc hybrid cover stock, right? Yep. It's one of the strongest covers. Yeah. Additive packages, I should say. Yeah. Um, yeah. Pretty dull. 500, 1500 grit. And, and what sticks out to you with these specs here on the on the core? What, the, what sticks that's out the highest the ASIM I've seen in quite a while. Yes. The intermediate yes. disc. When we do 021 on the, um, the radical, radical conspiracy. <laughs> I love saying that. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. I had to say it twice. The radical, radical conspiracy. 021. I thought that was pretty high. Um, and here's an 024. Right. So the key to this wall is not to have it roll forward. And that's where HK22 comes in. Right. Now, I don't know what the numbers go to after drilling, obviously, because only one not, company does that. Only, only Radical one, does only that. Only Radical does that. Get that horn out. Start start tuning the horn. Do, 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 do. <laughs> and uh, the beauty of that is that, um, you know, again, we, we've been doing that forever. It lets, it lets you know what the intermediate is going to go to and what the total is. Uh, I don't know this one. I, you know, I haven't studied it. But um, that core, tell me about that core a little bit. On um, the Havoc? Yeah. The Havoc core? Is that, the hater is that core? the same core? Havoc, the hater. Yeah, the hater core. I mean, it, it, it did get down the lane for me. It's okay. very strong. Right. Um, but it's, it's kind of like a different Hellraiser type core. Looks like some of it was based off of Hellraiser. Uh -huh. um, so it's got a lot of asymmetry to it. And yeah. normally when you see like that number 024, you're thinking, okay, this is going to be really quick response. Yeah. Um, but there's, there's a balance there because the RG is pretty high for a high. Yeah. 2.539 is pretty high. Mm -hmm. Um, so it kind of offsets a little bit. It gives a little bit more length and the HK obviously helps out get down the right. line too. Right. Right. But this is a ball that I think you start with and really break down a pattern when they're wet dry. Mm -hmm. you know where you kind of if you if you can play with your ball speed and you know play with your rotation a little bit going right. from more up the back and then yeah. more around the side as they start breaking down as you move in but it could be a ball that you start with at like nationals you know team event to sure. start at sure. least sure. you're not a urethane guy or anything like that <laughs> right mm -hmm. um but make your track i mean it's a strong ball it's an aggressive ball it's, it's gonna, gonna hook a lot break it down right yeah, but it's not like um, you know, hook early and kind of set up. It's more of it's it's pretty continuous for what it is. Right. So it's very strong. Good. Yeah. And then we got another benchmark to talk about, and then we'll get on. Yeah, yeah. benchmark balls are always key. I mean, every product, uh, every one of our brands have a benchmark ball, and the the, the GB has always been uh, Ebonite's Ebonite's benchmark ball. Right. Yeah. For a long time. I remember when the original game breaker came out like yeah, back in 07 or so. Right. And uh, who knew that what it would become, you know, obviously they evolved from V twos, but yes. Yeah. It's always some, something that we did before. And, and in, th in this case, um, like you said, it was what Ebonite did with the V two, but the, um, the, the course shape is simple. Yeah. It hasn't and really it, changed a whole no. lot over and, the and course it, of time. Right. And in most cases, it's usually the benchmark ball has a simpler core. Mm -hmm. You know, there's yeah. not going to be much dynamic change when you drill it. Um, 2.48048. It's got uh, GB 12.7 solid cover stock. It's not HK. Not an HK. So that's funny. It's like whenever we come out with a bunch of HK balls, people are like, oh, you guys put HK on everything. Yeah, another ball with HK. Well, you have a T-shirt that says that, Nick. What do you expect them to say? Well, here's my point. Phil, is okay. that when we come out with a ball that's not HK22, people was like, where's the HK22? Why <laughs> didn't you put it on this ball? You can't win. It's like, it's like fine. HK on everything. Boo. Fine. No HK at all. Boo. So the other day, somebody called up and asked about the radical, radical conspiracy. Mm -hmm. And they said, is HK on that? And I go, absolutely. It's in the logo. <laughs> yeah we engraved it on the ball absolutely yes it is it's on there let's look at it <laughs> that's great so I'm tell me more about that ball 500 1500 uh 500 1500 yeah so so dull surface it looks uh -huh. really dull out of the box the colors are blue and blue so it really kind of yeah gives it that meaner look um, but this is kind of like a, a next evolution of from gb4 solid which was gb 12.0 solid so okay. a little bit stronger cover stock right. um, index there. Um, 
And it just it's going to be a, a player's ball. You know, like Tommy Jones talks about this ball, how game breakers have always been in his bag sure, sure. for years and years and years because, right. you know, right. sometimes on tour or whatever, you need something that's going to be slower and smoother and you just know what's going to do. And, you know, you take those cores that have been around for almost, you know, 15, 20 years. Right. And you don't you don't change much about it. It's a known quantity. Oh, right. You know? Exactly. So tell me about Marshall Kent. He threw a GB on TV. Which one was that? Uh, he used the GB4 hybrid. So you're starting to see that one pop up. And that one came in, I think, last March or so. So kind of at the end of tour okay. season. Okay. So it they did get some play, but yeah. it was so late in the season that, you know, it just didn't right. make it didn't on get TV. A lot. Now, yeah. But that's a testament. You see what the tour guys are still throwing after a year. Sure, sure, sure. You know, it's, it's a benchmark symmetrical ball that has hk22 the gb4 hybrid right well and it's good when they're starting to break down you know they've a couple times now when the lanes have been kind of wish wash right you know last the last tournament was crazy because you know the we, like we talked about last week with the long pattern low volume on a beat up on a beat up pattern or beat up lane you got guys loft in the gutter chapter one lane patterns never put low volume on a beat up surface and go long <laughs> rule number one period why end result is the guy will be standing in the audience throwing it over the first row of people if he can get there so, yeah. yeah so <sighs> that's all right so let's go uh top five actually no, i'm gonna post the link, link one more time link up and i'll tell you the rules again for those that are joining us late um how could put your you name, put you, how could how dare you join us late? Um, <laughs> you you put your name in, and uh, at the end of the show, we're gonna pick one lucky contestant, mm -hmm. and that person will get to watch the wheel spin. And uh, if they if they're still in the show, they have an option to say, "Nah, I don't want that one. Spin it again." <laughs> or they can take nah. whatever they get. Nah, I don't want that. Nah, I don't want. Who shoes? needs shoes? I'd I rather got have, shoes. I don't have a grip sack. So. <laughs> well, guess what, pal? And now you do. And now, <laughs> now you, you do. got the best Same one in the industry. industry. Yeah. <laughs> All, All right, right, let's uh, let's go to top five. All right, we already this got a little bit of uh, how many? 187 entries already. So chugging right along. How many? 269 and 269 watching right now. It's early. It's, it's early. early. They're gonna jump in for for Steve. All right, top five, right. and then we're going to get to Stevie Fresh right after this. Yes. Top five green bowling balls. In, in honor, honor of um, Sunday, St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day. So anybody right. have a favorite green ball? You know, there hasn't been a whole lot in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Of green bowling balls. You know, I just thought of one we forgot, but go ahead. You thought of one we forgot? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Mm. Okay, go ahead. All right, number five. And these are in no particular order, but I think the number one is the number one for me, at least. Okay. All so right. somewhat particular order. Okay. The number nuke, five. I remember that. That was one of my favorite balls. Um, that color was hideous. <laughs> I tell you, you what, what. When it was on TV, you yeah. know what it was. Yeah. I have a funny story about the nuke. Like, I actually mm -hmm. wanted that ball for my 14th birthday, I think. 94, yeah. right? right? Right around that era. And uh, I called the pro shop, or I didn't call my mom called, but I said, Hey, you know, I, I my mom said I can get a ball. Do you have a 14 pound nuke? And mm -hmm. he's like, Yeah, come on, come on down and get it. Yeah, and I was like, Okay, I get there. And then he's searching through all the boxes. He's like, I don't have it, I don't, I don't know where it's at, blah blah blah. blah. But I got this beast, so I ended up getting a beast instead. You should have called me out of Compton to you, yeah, right. <laughs> I would have called you, be like, you Track wait, bowling, too. can I help you? Get away from me, kid. You bother me. Yeah. <laughs> Here's five dollars. Go get lost. Here's five dollars. Go get lost. Right. Yeah. Number four. Number four. Piranha C J. Yeah, that was a good ball, too. Yeah. All well, the piranhas Ozio, were good. Ozio made this ball look beautiful. Yeah, he, did. he did on the shows. He did. Yeah. Yep. That had ceramic core in it. You invented that. I did. I did. I invented that. I'm kind of noticing a theme with all these top five. Like these are all balls you had a part of. <laughs> is it i didn't know i don't remember all five but go ahead not the number one though i don't think all right probably not 
Oh, uh, yeah. Well, look at that. The synergy. That ball was really good. That one and the, and the solid was a forest green. Mm -hmm. um, Dave DeAnchamont made that ball sing. Oh, yeah. And he killed him. He made, I think, he made nine shows that year. Man. Yeah, he so had a, quite a year there. He did. He did. He didn't win a ton of them, though, did he? No, he won. I, he won two. He won two or three. Two or three. Uh, yeah. He got beat out by Mike Albee for Player of the Year, I believe. Who? Mike Aldi. Have you heard of him? <laughs> of course. <laughs> I'm just I kidding. Think I think you read about him. Uh, that was a political vote. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the zigzag. We like that one. That's a great color ball. Doing very well in sales. Um, I like that one a lot, and and it's a pretty ball too. It is not all green, but it's no, never, said not all have, green. never said we had to have all no. green just back in the nineties, you know, that one color technology. That's right. And then we had, uh, with this one, we did a little different with the core dynamics. There's a three to one ratio between intermediate diff and total diff. Yeah. We could thank Steve for that in a minute. Absolutely. And Thanks, when you Steve. drill it, you blow up both of them. So it's really incredible. Mm -hmm. All right. So number one, number one is dun, dun, dun. Had nothing to do with that ball. I know. I know. That's why it's number one. That's why it's number one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what ball we left out? What did we leave out? The gyro one, the green ball the, that Wayne Webb made popular, the green the, machine. The gyro pro or the gyro one? What are you I talking about was, there? I, I think it was a gyro. Well, maybe. I don't know. Gyro. Yeah. But Wayne Wayne Webb made that one prop, the green machine. We were all green all the time. Yeah, a lot of people are saying Nitro R, but... Yeah, we know, had that one on our list. It was, but it didn't make the cut. We just yeah. felt the performance of that ball just wasn't quite the, up to snuff. It had to perform. It had to perform. All right. Are we ready? Are we ready for him? Is he here? Michael Buffer, <laughs> give us an intro. <laughs> Let's get ready to rumble. Now you got to rumble. There he is. Stevie. What's hey, happening? How's everybody doing? Doing good. The radical man. That's it with the radical plan. The core of it <laughs> all. The core master extraordinaire. The coronator. Two kind, two oh, that's a good name for him. The coronator. Coronator. <laughs> like that sounds that. like coronator. someone who does weddings. Yeah, doesn't it? He's the he's Steve Freshour. The coronator. The coronator or the royal family or something. That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on it's been a few weeks since we've had you on but we yeah, told you been a, been a month and a half or so yeah you're gonna make it more 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 frequently well i think I everyone's fat on today. i figured out how to turn the chat on today so i'm actually watching <laughs> some people right there you go yeah we figure you know we give everybody enough time to absorb all the information from last time so that they're ready for the new information this time <laughs> yeah yeah you know plus we had a lot of launches in between that that usually uh affects us a little bit whether it's um having to talk about them here or um or, or, or nick getting ready for uh the whole week worth of work of uh, yesterday you were filming balls for hammer that's right yeah yeah, yeah so we it's, had it's crazy. Uh, mm -hmm. robert smith here we had shannon plowski and alec klepling Klep 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 i can't say his last name kleplinger there you go something like that something like that what's the difference no one know who he was you just could have said it alec k yeah. Ali K. That's it. You got to do Allie it. Ali K. Okay. So there you have it. Yeah. Steve, what do you have for us today? Uh, 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 they've got me thinking about the Steelers right now, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure it? what to think about Russell Wilson, Mark. I'm not for sure yet. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I just... <laughs> hey, sometimes a new uniform change is all it takes. That might be the answer, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. who wants to play in Denver anyway? Like, honestly, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I have high hopes for my Pirates this year. We might actually get five hundred. Mm. I th I think but, you got a, a decent young team. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's not bad. Building you know, a nice core. Five hundred. Yeah, yeah. Signing people for yeah. you know multi year contracts, which is you know unbelievable. Oh, really, I had a conversation with a buddy of mine yesterday. Um, about salary cap and stuff like that and luxury tax and how the teams that don't put a lot of effort into fielding the team and having uh, salaries are still making money off the luxury tax. Yeah. They're benefiting the most. Exactly. By, so there's really tanking. no reason to by tanking. 
Right. So they yeah. can turn around and say, you know what? Uh, yeah, the couple of clubs breaking even with the, uh, you know, the, the the attendance and everything. But uh, oh wait, I'm gonna get. 1.4 million or 2 million or 5 million from the Yankees and 3 million from the Dodgers. And, you know, I don't want to name any teams specifically that might tank when it comes to that stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and say the Pittsburgh Pirates are one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just going to go out there and say it. All right. So, anyhow, yep. hopefully you'll have a 500 year. Do you go to many games? I We, we try to go to two or three, Good. four. Yeah. PNC yeah. Park is beautiful. If anyone yeah, wants to go for a weekend, it's it's one of the best places to see a game. It's really nice. Yeah, yeah. Stadium. Pittsburgh. Cool. All right. Are cool. We ready? we ready for it? Yeah. yeah, I'm anxious to see the reaction of the end here. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be a uh, Oh, hey, and by the way, I just want to – the Belsh. I'm not for sure what his real name is, but the Belsh asked me a question about – Play, uh, after the plugging and re-drilling the last time, he yeah. asked a question about putting a basically a gradient line balance hole and then plugging it. And um, I actually did that while I was waiting here on the hitter. And I used a 65 by 4 by 30 layout, and it was an 026, 058 drilled. 026, 058. Wow. I put two balance holes in it. And it jumped to 049, 083. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Yeah. I, I plugged them with 1.16 grains per cubic centimeter. And it dropped it back down to 27, 060. Mm -hmm. so, it, so it was basically not really much improvement to, okay. I but thought it would have been more but it really wasn't. And it would vary depending upon the core shape, how much you're actually hitting the core. But to go from 026, 058, drill the bounce holes, plug them, and you only jump to 027, 060, not, not there's really it. not much difference. Not, not worth it, right. Not worth the effort. Yeah, right. and ethically, right. I felt kind of dirty even doing that. So, <laughs> <laughs> and you, you didn't even fill it with foam or anything. That wasn't that's what I was thinking. Up. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, <laughs> put that little uh, piece of styrofoam underneath and pour a quick plug on top of it and cut it down and yeah, hope that'd it be the... fly out mid mid lane. Well, you got to yeah. get the you got to get the weight the gravity weight of styrofoam first. You can see what it's lighter if it. Make sure it doesn't absorb. I don't know if styrofoam would absorb plug or not. Yeah, it might. Know. It might. But you can get one with a coating on it, hypothetically. Oh, hypothetically. <laughs> Phil, Phil, There's Phil's, the Phil's going to come to Nationals, and all these bowling balls are going to have these one-and-a-half-inch holes that have been plugged in the side. <laughs> hypothetically, you can get the foam-coated styrofoam. <laughs> I mean, it's, covered. it's coated. It doesn't yeah. absorb the plug. Everyone's gonna be run. Everyone's gonna be running out to Joanne Fabric after this with a coupon. Exactly where you get. Oh, well, either that or <laughs> uh, hey, more of a Hobby Lobby guy. I get Hobby it. Hobby Lobby. That's where I heard they have it at Hobby Lobby. Yeah, allegedly, it might allegedly. be on their website. Allegedly at Hobby Lobby in perfect mm -hmm. one and a half inch rounds. Yeah, or you can even paint them with um, clear nail polish. Paint. Oh. I get you. I, I see what you're saying. That's more and work. It coats the foam. It's work. It is. But again, if yeah. you want to hypothetically do that, mm -hmm. you could uh, you can accomplish that. You can just dip them like a corn dog, like uh, you know, with latex <laughs> or something. It's a corn dog drilling. Yeah, it's my, it's my corn dog. <laughs> All right, enough. Let's get Steve back in, into what he <laughs> came here to do. All right. Let's talk about the, uh, the overview for today there, Steve. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm getting sidetracked with this chat. Um, <laughs> See, we, uh, last time we didn't we didn't tell that Steve that there was a chat on the side, and now he's just yeah. reading the chat. Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll deal with the chat after the fact. How about that? Yeah, because yeah, Greg had an interesting question. Yeah. Thanks for Joe's Pro Shop. So on today, I'm going to show you the suggested layouts for um, the Radical Conspiracy, the Radical Radical. Conspiracy. Radical, radical conspiracy. I forgot the second radical. Yeah, you can't. 
and then um, we'll show the outer limits and um, and I'll take some for the future. I'll, I'd like to get the audience to give me an idea of whether they'd like to see the ball that you can see through the core. I, I picked the pictures that they could see through the core okay. um, just to show how deep the fingers and thumb go. But right, cool. um, and then some really the last two bullets here, the pin distance effect, the pin distance effect using the max results was something that we did in 2021. Right. And it has some very interesting results. Some people might not believe it. And <laughs> then um, then we did it again with the radical conspiracy, except I only used three different pin distances. And there's a little bit of difference and I'll, and I'll be able to show you or, and explain okay. to you why there's a little bit of difference. Okay, let's go on. Okay, so yeah, radical conspiracy. I took the picture off the website. Um, 2156 ball. Same as always, I use a PAP that's five over by three eighths up. Fingers are 31, 30 second, 31, 30 second inch holes, two inches deep. Thumb is five and a quarter inch hole, three inches deep. What are you knocking and, on your? What are you knocking on your desk? Are you knocking on your desk? No, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> like, come in. <laughs> my dry erase marker. <laughs> so, on the radical conspiracy, all of the following five pictures or five slides will see the axis migra migration. <clears throat> so, so this is your, the max flip layout A. Yeah, seventy by three and a half by twenty. And again, I use the I use the see through core just because I thought people might like to see absolutely the inner. So okay, yeah, I debated about that. Right, well, it shows just how much you touch it too with the the depths that you go to. So you're not seeing yeah a whole lot of core removal with this particular core. Right, right. which is why the total diff of O fifty six only went to O sixty. Mm -hmm. Right. As opposed to something like zigzag, which started in 045 and went to 060. Right. Right. Exactly. Because of the moment arms, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Next one. The 45 by 4 by 35 layout. So this would be like versatile layout. Vers yeah. The diffs changed slightly. Intermediate went up. Now notice that the migration goes below the fingers now as opposed to above. Yeah, yeah, good call. So before yeah. the max flip, the little blue dots mm -hmm. is what we're referring to there. That's the where your axis migrates to as it flares down the lane. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, not enough people talk about it, but um, the the distance, you know, like that ball that's on the screen right now started off with a four inch pin. And by the time it got to the pin to spin line, which is in black, the line from the pin to the PSA, that ball, I mean, it's it started off as a four inch pin distance, but now it gets probably, I don't know, closer to three inches from. Right the pen yeah. so right. the core's laying down a little bit more and if you can you go back to the slide before and show it now look yeah. at that now you're talking about a three and a half inch pen but as it migrates to the uh pin to spin line yeah, you're talking it's getting about a lot one and closer. a half two inches yeah yeah it's getting a lot closer mm -hmm. and yes emilio they are using inserts in a slug Okay, right. and then um, the third layout, what, 20 by four and a half by 40, which has been interesting seeing these on the um, the videos um, because, you know, the lower rev bowlers, they're still getting a lot out of, no, we actually use the next layout, don't you, yeah. Bill? The yeah, next we layout. The, yeah, we use the pin down, pin down layout. For the, yeah. for the low speed, low rev players, right. And the discs are, will be similar, but you notice so for this, you can just start to see that the pin, the, the axis migration is mm -hmm. 
is actually going down a little bit. So it's kind of going to wrap around the thumb. And actually, if, if you had a really long lane, the pin, the, the axis migration would actually migrate around an elliptical path around the PSA. Wow. Okay. Here's uh, here's Phil's favorite layout. My favorite layout. I invented this. <laughs> <laughs> the pin down layout. Ideal for low speed, low rev players. Uh, ideal for low speed players mostly, too, because mm -hmm. you you, you uh, when you get that pin up, you get that flare, it, much more flare, and then it it just wants to go forward down lane. So this one doesn't want to do that as quickly. Yeah, I mean, almost across the board on asymmetrical balls, we find that the pin down one has more back end and more continuation than the pin up, just because pin up right. wants to roll forward for those lower speeds. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, and then the short pin. Yeah. See, that one I always have trouble with, the short pins on certain balls, because I can't move in if they start the hook, because they won't tip down lane. Right. Strong cover, especially yeah, strong when there's cover, a strong right, cover exactly. on there. Yeah, yeah. Mo loved this layout, though. Mo was big on this layout for a lot yeah. of people. But you know what? But Mo would also say that if you can if you can stay on top of it and throw it harder, there's a great layout because you could stay in that that zone longer. Uh, if you can't throw it harder, it, as soon as you have to stop moving in, it becomes a problem. Now I have a short pin on the breakaway, which is a symmetrical ball, and that ball rolls really good and, and flips down lane. Mm -hmm. You know, and I can stay on top of it for a pretty long time. Yeah, we use so again, a lot of the match them up right. Yeah, we use a lot of the short pins on the symmetrical balls in our videos for Throwbot. Yeah, yeah. Since the absence of ba balance holes, we no longer use the pin-down layouts for <clears throat> symmetrical in our in our layout sheets or even on our Throwbot. Yeah. All right, moving on. Yeah, the outer limits. Yeah, and that's um, one of Steve's, uh, uh, one of his initial designs for us um from scratch right this one was a uh, a project uh, that you worked on for a little while uh and man this ball does well it's selling still selling well and we just launched the pearl version of it uh which is this one uh, th this week you know yeah this is one of the first cores without mo's influence yeah exactly all right moving on to the next slide O fourteen, O fifty one, and I have all those. I have the undrilled numbers at the top there. O fourteen, O fifty one. On each side, I did that so people can compare. Actually, for me to be able to remember it, <laughs> I'm, I'm a math teacher and a numbers guy, but I can't remember all these numbers sometimes. I, I understand. <laughs> uh, but yeah the max flip layout uh you know one thing i'm noticing on this core notice this is a 2659 so that's uh 2652 would be a diff ratio of 50. so this is um uh, i'm wondering about um, I, I remember when you when we talked about the conspiracy the my, the axis migration i believe was actually above the fingers a little bit right it was, it was actually down a little bit yeah and that has everything to do with the drill diffs. That has everything to do with the diff ratio. Oh, really? Okay. The, the well, I mean, the drill diffs are what's going to define the RG contours of the ball. Yeah, yeah. And so, so naturally, the the um, the diff ratio is you know just the intermediate divided by total. So right, right. So if they go back and, and watch this again and they notice the difference between the 70 by layout for the conspiracy and the outer limits, they'll see a difference in the axis migration because the drill diffs of those balls are different. Gotcha. <clears throat> so it's really not just a total diff. When you look at a ball, you have to figure out, and we're the only ones that do it, what the, the drill diff is. Um, and, and again, we're, the only way you can do that is we're, we're the only company that does that. Um, we invented that. We invented that, that uh, to tell people what it is after drilling. And like Steve just said, the, that's how the contour changes um, on that diff ratio. 
Right. And then the 45 by 4 by 35. Hmm. The total diff didn't drop as much as the conspiracy, but still dropped a little. Right. And the intermediate goes up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the 20 by. So now we're getting towards the more of the side of the ball, yeah, getting closer to the Z axis. Or... Yeah, you missed the uh, moment arms on that one. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And then pin down. Another one you drilled like this, Phil. Yeah, I just drilled that yesterday, right? I got to throw it last night, the second half of the last game. So I was able to stay in the um, conspiracy for two and a half games with that pin down drilling. Um, and then the beauty is I took this ball out and stood in the same spot and finished the game. <laughs> just, so I didn't, yeah. to, I didn't have to jump in any further. You know, I was chasing. Just use the cover difference and strength there and just stay in the same spot. Yeah, and also you got to realize this ball's got a little less um, guts to it, mm -hmm. you know, after drilling. So I was able to just stay in the same spot, and the motion was cleaner, was straighter through the front. It's perfect it's for you. Enough tip. That's exactly what I wanted. It worked out great. Perfect for you. Less guts. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm gonna stab you with a pencil. <laughs> and the short pin. Yeah. Last layout there. Last layout, the short pin. So it definitely drops the numbers there. Intermediate mm -hmm. goes way down. But yeah. yeah. So definitely taking the core out of play with that. So let's mm. talk about the next effect. All right. Yeah. Now the fun stuff. Yeah, it is the part that's scary because, you but, know, people. But before we do, I'm going to post the link one last time. Get your entries in. We got about seven and a half minutes left till the entries close forever until next week. And then if you stay on the show, you get the second spin if you'd like it. Yep. We implore you to stay on. Stay on. Watch. Better opportunities and get more knowledge. More knowledge. Extended knowledge. This is one I've been waiting for um, since the last time we spoke. The last time Steve was on the show. Mm -hmm. The effect of the pin distance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we what we use is a sixty five degree drilling like uh, angle and a twenty five degree VAL angle, and we use those six different pin distances: two and seven eighths, three and three eighths, three and seven eighths, four and three eighths, four and seven eighths, five and three eighths. Don't ask me why Mo picked those numbers. I would have rather have been two and a half, three, two, three, three and a yeah. half. Yeah. <laughs> He likes uh, the number eight. Yeah. He that's right. He loves the number eight. Yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> and you can see in each of the pictures, I'm looking at the top row. <clears throat> you can see that the v, the drilling angle is 65 and the VAL angle stays at 20. So I'd recommend just kind of looking at that first. And then we can then we can just go from left to right. I'm I'm looking and seeing that it does look like two and seven eighths pin the PAP on the picture on the left uh -huh. and you can see the getting further with the pins getting farther away from the PAP right mm -hmm. the axis migration is well I, actually the other thing I'll point out is the red dot on the picture on the left is the new pin the low RG shifted that much and and then on the next few pictures the new pin after the layout shifted the pr principal axes of the core so the psa shifts a little bit the pin shifts a little bit right and you so, can see that actually when you get over to four and seven eighths the pin actually shifted to less than it did when you use the yeah. shorter pin the two and seven eighths right mm -hmm. yeah so what he's talking about is the the low RG is marked by the pin before drilling, right? And then after drilling, after you introduce holes into the bowling ball, the low RG changes and that pin is no longer the actual low RG anymore. It can move up to a little bit. Exactly. And the PSA, you can see, I should have made those dots a little bit bigger, but the, the PSA um, before drilling was basically right 
to the right of the thumb, maybe a little bit below the thumb. Yeah. And it ends the PSA ends up in the thumb. So if you spun it up on a determinator, it's going to center out right there on the right edge of the thumb hole. Right. This is the max results, um, the max results um, core. Yeah, so it's you're dealing with a strong um, sim asymmetrical core. Yeah, yeah. Right. I believe I believe this is an O thirty O fifty ball. Oh, there it is. So yeah. now we see the numbers. Right. And this is what a lot of people would maybe not believe or have a hard time believing. <laughs> the undrilled ball, which started off as an O thirty O fifty ball. Basically, the intermediate jumped up for all those layouts that jumped up between 042 and 044, which is almost the same. And exactly. the total diff jumped up to 062 to 060. Which is almost the same, there. right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, going strictly off the numbers, what are you saying here based on this chart? <laughs> <laughs> what is the theory here? <laughs> Put put me on the spot. I, well, I know yeah. that there are some people that believe the numbers are everything. Mm -hmm. And right. I'm I'm very reluctantly speaking my mind right now. There are some people who believe that numbers are everything. And I do not believe that. I okay. mean, I believe that within the whole system that the numbers are important. You know, an 062 ball is going to behave differently than the 042 ball. But when it comes to this, those six balls right there are, for the most part, if all you are interested in are numbers, then those four balls, or all those six balls, I mean, are really yeah. essentially the same. Exactly. Right. But the only variable here being the core orientation in relation to your drilled fingers. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So and, and, and again, you can't just go by the numbers because and I hear it all the time that, you know, uh, what's the after drilling numbers? And you tell them <clears throat> and then they say, well, I had a ball drilled a certain way and it, it didn't roll anything like it. Yeah, I understand that. But you have to understand the numbers were the same, but the core was in a different position in the ball. Mm -hmm. You know, and we'll so be in a different effective. position when it hits the pins, too. I, exactly right. Yeah, but going strictly off the numbers, you're basically saying that after drilling, you may not see any difference between a ball drilled 65 by two and seven eighths by 25 <laughs> versus 65 by five and three eighths by 25. So forever, we've always said CG doesn't matter, CG no matter, right? But now we're almost saying pin distance no matter. Okay, so we have to be careful. Yes, we have to be careful. Because we use pin to PAP distances to control not only track flare, but in order to help burn off or retain axis tilt. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So I believe those six balls would roll differently. Yeah. Now, <laughs> I, and I also, before I forget, I want to point out too, I want, I want everyone to look at the third picture the three and seven eighths mm -hmm. that axis migration is basically straight okay but if you look at the four and three eighths there okay. starts to be a little bit of curvature and it's kind of going down towards the bottom of the fingers mm -hmm. and even when you get to the five and three eighths they're still migrating to the fingers and you can see the curvature of that axis migration. And that has everything to do with that ball having a 0 0.74, 0 0.75 diff ratio. Mm -hmm. it's, it has everything to do with the intermediate and the total diff of the ball. That's why that axis migration is so curved. And that's important because that ball started off as a five and three eighths pin. Right. And as the ball's migrating down the lane and you get to where you're going to cross that pin to spin line, that core angle of that ball is basically going to be the same as the core angle of the three and seven eighths ball. 
Mm. I see it. So, so we have to, moving forward, I think the next best test for us is to take three of these drillings, um, probably the, the first one, the last one, and one in the middle, drill them like that and put them on Throwbot. That sounds like a wonderful idea. That is an incredible idea. I so invented once that. We, I so invented once we that. go from theory to right. the perception is all these numbers are the same, they should roll the same. On That's paper, perception, right? On paper, but we're going to find out what the reality is, and we're going to share our results in an upcoming episode. Yes, yeah, because um, again, perception versus reality. The perception is that, well, the pin distance changes all, and it does not. The numbers are all the same, basically within reason, but the orientation of the core, to relative to the guys rolling the ball, is a big difference, and that's where you see a difference in ball motion. So, again, we talked about this earlier, Steve, about we use science and we have scientists, physicists, chemists, <laughs> and we don't just throw Throwbot. stuff out there and hope it works. <laughs> Throwbot engineer. Throwbot engineers. Right. Exactly. That's my official you know, term. That's you. The Throwbot yeah. engineer. Right. I'm a utility engineer. <laughs> so I, I so, think that uh, I think we're getting a lot of questions on this. Yeah. Um, but people don't believe it. And like you said. You know, you tell them that and they don't believe you, and it's like well, you paint the house for a living. I do, I do bowling balls for a living. What are you telling me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, really. <laughs> well, I, I remember when I created this work. Uh, yeah, I didn't really believe it myself. You know, I I, I had a hard time believing right. that that would have happened. I wouldn't have thought that would have happened before I did that work. So let me ask you a question then. So re let's talk about the reason behind this. Um, it's inherent to this core that no matter where you put the pin, the numbers are going to be about the same. Inherent to this type of core. Um, so if you had a different ball, obviously they would be different numbers, but it would still be the same uh, ratio, sort of, so to speak, where the intermediates the only changed a little, and then they stayed the same throughout all the drillings, and the total diff changed, and then it stayed the same throughout all the drillings. So it's inherent to the core what you get. Uh, would the ratios change? Yes, slightly, yes. Okay. Yeah, and it and again, we're going to show them some great stuff that we're going to do as scientists. Okay. But um, for this core, um, the the max results core, you can see the um, the finger scoop technology. Right. Right. And right. that was really exciting to create that technology and those yeah. ideas because um, if the finger holes cannot intersect that core, then we are helping maintain diffs. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to use three pin distances, the two and seven eighths and the five and three eighths. Mm -hmm. And we cut it right in the middle to four and a quarter. Okay. So we're going to drill these three balls. And Nick, I believe you're so gracious to drill them, put them on specto, drill, uh, throw them. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do our standardized testing that we normally do for perception versus reality. We'll throw them all, I don't know, three, four times, get the averages, see if there's chart. any anomalies. Right. And see what we got. And we'll have a chart, a, a ball motion graph showing you the ball shape um as it goes down a lane and uh, and then we'll see what we get yeah it'll be interesting so yeah i didn't know because you sometimes you just never know what's going to happen until you just run the numbers but yeah. um so the drilling numbers for the radical conspiracy mm -hmm. created a little bit more variation in the intermediate diff right and and basically because this core the, the the shape of this core allowed the finger holes to uh, intersect mm -hmm. a little bit more so it altered the drill diffs a little bit the intermediate especially right right but even looking at that you got you're going from 27 to 32 uh and 59, 59. that's the same on a total diff 0.059 
So what are the main things that we should look at? Do you do you believe that the ball will flare the exact same on each ball? No. You don't. So do you believe that the two and seven eights will actually flare less than the five and three eights? Or should I say four and a quarter, since that might be the most flare, but even by the numbers, it's not differential wise. Well, uh, since this is an asymmetrical core, I think we'll see less difference than if it was a symmetrical core. Mm -hmm. But good question. Com common I thinking is, oh, it's 059. You know, you have a ball that's 0, 0, 059, 059. Right. They're, they're going to have the they're, they're going to have the same. They should. Right. The separation should technically be the same and the flare total flare should be about the same um i mean obviously the difference in the intermediate there is going to change a little bit but how much is it going to change how much is five points of you know 0 0.005 worth when it comes down to it and is there really going to be that big of a difference between a two and seven eights versus five and three eights or are the angles way more valuable and impressionable on a, on a drilled ball I think the two and seven eighths is going to flare less. And I think the four and a quarter will flare the most. And okay. the five and three eighths will be between, but really close to four and a quarter. And mm -hmm. I'm just making an educated guess and I could be wrong. I'm jotting it down. So I have my notes so that when we actually <laughs> get you back on the show and we find our results. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's going to awesome. be like, it's going to be like the Maury show. It's like, with well, the two and seven eighths, you guess it would flare the least. And then, <laughs> worry. And our and our and our no. investigators determined that was a lie. No. So so let me ask this question: the we we know that the ball motions are going to be different. I mean, if not, we're in the wrong business. But we know that the ball motions are going to be different. Does the amount of total hook stay the same? It's just the shape is different. You know, I mean, the flares get closer. Um, the response time is different. Where it reads the lane is different. You know. I, I think that's what people are, are, are probably thinking to themselves right now, that if I drill a short pin versus a long pin, and not the pin, the manufactured pin, the pin placement, um, Looking at the numbers, they should all roll the same, and we know they don't. But does, does the total hook change? That's something we're going to have to find out, I think. I think yeah. so, too, right? That's another thing, the topic. I mean, that, uh, that'll, that'll show up in this test. I mean, obviously, once we get it on there, we're going to know pretty quick what they do. Yeah. And, yeah, exactly. and also how they interact with the pins, you know, because we don't, we don't just stop looking when it hits the pins, how much no. it hooks, we always all that. Good. Through the pins, right? Right. Yeah. How did it interact yeah. once it went through? Did it roll forward or is it still hooking? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so we got I the would... first part covered. We know the numbers don't change much. Um, and, and obviously it's the same thing. And this is what's interesting because I get this question all the time. People write in, they could, they call and I want to get a ball with a three to four inch pin. I'm like, what's the difference? <laughs> you know, and there is no difference. This shows you there's no difference. It doesn't matter how far the pin is from the CG. No. It does no not difference. matter. CG no matter. Pin distance does not matter any longer <laughs> because you can't it's put easier. a balance hole in it. Easy there. It's going to be funny if this, this happens to show that a 2 and 7 eighths, you know, has the same amount of, you know, flare or hook or whatever as a 4 and a quarter, then it's just what do we – we're just what do we what do we open in a can of worms here then where it's people are going to be <laughs> drilling a lot of balls with yeah where, where do you want the pin I, I don't care i don't care put it anywhere 65 by 25 by whatever <laughs> <laughs> but you have to take into consideration till nexus rotation i mean how much flare do you want how much flare do you need all of it you know well <laughs> do you that's i want i want to i want to the layouts aren't, aren't flaring more than what two and a half inches I want I want all the flare to flare over it and then flare backwards again. But <laughs> I, on the other hand, would like it not to flare. 
I want it. I want a hundred <laughs> foot lane to be able to get there too, because I don't have the rev rate. But we do have a new staffer that just might have the rev rate, and he'll that's be on right. here next week, hopefully. Next right, week. Rudy Revs. Yeah, that's going to be our special guest next yeah. week. I hope. So. Yeah, I'm going to get it all planned and and worked out. And um, you know, Rudy's been away from the game for a while, so this is all new to him. But <laughs> you know, it's he's just, not a technical guy. No, no, he's not. But I was in the pro shop yesterday with my buddy Jeff, and I told him, you know, he was going to drill a ball, and I said on a symmetrical ball, putting the pin down or pin up, it's not going to matter. You can't put a hole in it anymore, the balance hole. Mm -hmm. So this, again, shows that that those pin placements are going are, are maybe going to affect the roll on an ASIM. On a symmetrical, probably not as much. On a symmetrical with a lower diff, probably not at all. But, you know, this is pretty eye-opening when people think that, hey, if I put the pin five and three-eighths away, I'm going to get, you know, so much more flare or so much more... Um, differential it's not the diff stay the same yeah so you know, I, yeah. that was the last slide right as we're yeah the other thing i was going to point out is yeah. the um when you look at the uh, this something that i look at i think about is uh the um the axis migration the axis migration for the two and seven eights if it say every say every ball did flare five inches okay okay, okay. make a hypothetical every ball flares five inches mm-hmm <clears throat> the two and seven eighths ball, the pin is going to reach the pin to spin line quicker, quicker. than the five and seven eighths inch ball. Right. right. And to, to me, I always think about the pin and the spin line is where all the magic happens. So tell me about that. Let's talk about that for a second because I know people are going to have the same question. Pin to spin line, it reaches it quicker. Does it? How does that affect ball motion? Um. Does once it passes, is it possible for a ball to flare more once it passes that line? Like, could it balls flare less in the front part and more in the dry? Is that possible? Uh, yes, yes, it is. And these these are questions that Buckosh Buckosh is on here right now. Um, me and we have talked about this. Some balls will flare more in the oil, and some will flare more in the dry. It just depends. Someone's asking in there about what is axis migration. The PAP will migrate. The, the axis at which that ball is spinning starts off off your hand of what we call the PAP. And then that axis is constantly changing as the ball is traveling down the lane. When that, pin, when that axis gets to the pin to spin line is when that ball is laid down as much as it's going to lay down. I'm starting to I'm starting to overwhelm myself with my <laughs> my, my thoughts are going in all types of directions. Sorry, right now I need to slow down. So if, if somebody wants to see that visually, I, I and I don't know if this is pr correct. I've been doing it for years. I just put a piece of tape in the palm, a piece of white tape in the palm. Yeah, and the guy throws it, and you'll see where the tape goes before it hits the pins. Yeah, when when I do when yeah. I test uh, with some friends around here, I place uh, and my brother I place a piece of tape on the PAP. So right. as soon as he releases the ball, I can tell that that yeah. is his PAP. Yeah. I also find the last oil ring. Okay. And I find the PAP for that oil ring. Okay. And then I try to find, um, then I, and I can kind of guess where the axis migrations are going to go, but um, then I place a, then I place a piece of tape at the PAP that's right before the pins. Okay. Yeah. And I, so I'll watch that tape. I'll see it at the beginning and then I'll right. see the next piece of tape at the end of the oil. Right. And then I'll see the next one right at the pins. Yeah. Yep. And then I'll measure that distance to see how much did it flare in the in the in the oil and then in the dry, right? Then in the uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Some balls will flare more in the oil than in the dry, and vice versa. I mean, you just sure. never sure, sure. Now that affects yeah. axis migration. That uh, or, I'm sorry, your axis rotation that affects your axis tilt. Right. And um I have my theories that I've talked to Brian Buckosh and uh, we've been actually working on something maybe that we might be able to um, determine how correct or incorrect. But um, 
you know, those are things in the pipeline, I hope. Yeah. So I guess the question, the million dollar question is when is the ideal time for your axis point to migrate through the pin to spin line? Is there a certain point on the lane to maximize your entry angle, your pin carry, all that? What's the magic point where you want that to cross or does that not exist? That is a great question. I, I ask great <laughs> questions. That's what I do because I'm interested in this stuff because <laughs> if, it, if, it, and? If, it if it if it passes the pin to spin line at the end of the pattern, is that ideal or do you want it to pass closer to the pins? Is that more ideal? Do you want it to tip right before impact or do you want it to tip sooner? To, to I mean, that's where the million dollar question is. What, what will yeah. create a better path to the pocket that's more... Well, you're talking uh, about path to the probable. pocket or energy through the pins. Both, but it has the most energy through oh. the pins that that will, will promote more carry, more strikes, right, more right, entry angle. Right. So right. what is the magic number for – and that's going to – that's the thing. There's probably not one answer because everybody throws the ball different. Everybody has different Pattern. PAPs. Everybody has different rev rates and ball speeds. So the balls are going to reach those points a lot different or slower or faster for certain guys and girls. So I don't think there is a magic answer, but if there was for a robot type of bowler, because we have one of those in house, That's right? We do. <laughs> and we can manipulate essentially where we want. If we want that pin to spin line to be at the last oil ring before it hits the dry, we could probably set that up. Yeah. Might take a few chances, but would that lead to more strikes, more carry all that? That's the million dollar question. Yeah, that's a com I think that's a combination of larger drilling angles and or possibly longer um, PA, pin to PAP. Mm -hmm. I've always considered if I can get if I can get the if I can get your um, axis migration to hit the pin to spin line at the break point. Oh, at the break point. Okay. You're able to create the most shift in motion possible. Huh. But it's that's just like, you, but you're, 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 you're it's, you know, you, how, how can you, you can't just, it's going to be different for every ball. It's going to be different for every bowler, mm -hmm. every lane pattern, every lane pattern. Every lane pattern. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, so, I'm, what I'm more excited about this test on Throwbot is if we drill those three balls, when we drill it, those, when, when we drill those three balls and, and have uh, the Throwbot throw them. Are we going to see a, a distinct difference in the ball motion where a guy can actually build an arsenal based on one ball, three drillings? Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? In other words, take Ooh. a higher, higher intermediate diff ball like the conspiracy, 21, drill those three balls. If I did that to a symmetrical ball, same thing, and I did it to a lower intermediate if asymmetrical ball i have a nine ball arsenal what are the crossovers if and that's just any? bringing them to league exactly going to league <laughs> but you know what i'm saying in other words will that allow a person to understand better that you have more predictability in your arsenal if you can do that you know, this ball is, 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 it is what the motion looks like. I like that motion. Now, when that goes away, this is the motion. And when that goes away, this is the motion. I think that would help us uh, not only sell balls to people that work rather than just sell a ball. Um, it would give them the education to know that, you know, you don't need to be buying uh, four different types of balls, maybe one ball with three different drillings. Or if you have a tournament play and you want, um, a symmetrical and asymmetrical you can drill six balls I, i'd like to i think this i think we're going to learn a lot from this uh, throwbot test when it comes to that you know? we're going to learn a lot and then we're going to have a lot more questions and we are <laughs> and then you'll be back to answer them <laughs> that or i could throw out more questions because we Which, i have data about what happens with a different drilling angle well, that's absolutely right. And that's another week. I mean, we have forever to talk about this, too. It's not like we have to get it all covered today. But I mean, you know, another show could be that. Um, 
you know, I think Nick needs to get a little timetable put together for the drillings of the three balls and, and throw by throwing them. Um, and then have you come back on when that happens so that we can look at the data. You know, I think you should send it to Steve ahead of time, the data. Though. Don't pop it to him on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. might, you might see his head explode. Exactly. <laughs> like, here's all the data. I explain yourself, Steve. Come on. <laughs> well, it's just like just like an Oppenheimer movie. It's like theory can only get us so far. We have to actually put it out of practice. Yeah. yeah. And right. you know, it, it's funny because we, we brag about that a lot. And I say brag because we do. Uh, about how much work we put into the um, the engineering of the core uh, and what it means, you know, you're not going to get this anywhere else. I mean, the people that are on on the show watching, call up one of the other companies, ask them what the after drilling is uh, on a ball, and they'll put you on hold. You'll hear all of the elevator music for five minutes, then they'll come back and tell you the person's not here. You know why he's not there? He doesn't exist. He doesn't work oh, there. He doesn't work there. <laughs> You know, this is what goes into us building a bowling ball. It's not like, oh, that call looks good. Let's uh, let's throw that in the ball. Uh-uh. No. No. You know, and Steve's got stuff he'll talk about down the road that's absolutely incredible. Um, you know, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. You know, and, and we do the testing. It's not that we just make a ball and throw it out there. We do the testing that, that proves this stuff out. Phil literally does all the testing. Not me. I don't no. throw them anymore. Not they doing tests. No, they, sounds... only make, they only make 15 pounders. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I throw four. Every time you call me, though, they're like, yeah, I'm testing balls today. Well, it's not like... me. I'm, I'm doing a ball test. I'm going yeah. to a ball test. I'm facilitating it. I'm 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 watching yeah. ball testing today. That's what you should I'm, say. I should say that, but you know what I mean by that. Um, I don't know what you mean because I can yeah, only well, take you literal. I only take you yeah, at face exactly. value. Here we go. <laughs> but yesterday I threw the um the ridiculous, not ridiculous, I keep calling it ridiculous. The conspiracy and the outer limits pearl both drilled the same pin down. Um, I put uh, off the drill sheet, I just moved the PA, the, the, the pin to PAP a half inch. Um, and, and I was absolutely amazed how I could throw the um, conspiracy as long as I could on a league shot. Normally, if I drilled that pin up, it would burn up and I'd throw three shots with it and have it be in the bag. So. I was able to throw that. So, you know, just a tip for those people that have trouble with the balls not hitting down lane, it's because the pin is um, pin up and it's probably a little further away from your PAP. Get it pinned down and, and uh, you'll have a little more fun with it. You know, Possibly. Possibly. All right, Steve, we thank you so much. We're going to pick a winner. You want to hang out and watch this again? Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, thanks yeah. for having me again. Yeah, our pleasure. We'd love to have you back again. We'll figure out the dates and get it going. Here's the wheel. Here's the rules. You're in the mm -hmm. thing. You're in. It's closed, right? You can't enter anymore. Yep. Your name is in there. He's going to pick a name. That I person, have picked the name. Yeah, I picked it already. He picked the name. We're going to pick the name, tell you who you are. <laughs> We're going to tell, We're gonna tell you who you are. We're going to tell you who you are. Pick, Spin the wheel. If you're still in the show, you have 90 seconds. From the time... We announce your name. You got 90 seconds to respond in the chat. Find the chat that you're if here. Your, if your name matches up, great. If it doesn't, then we're going to ask you to verify something. And uh, but and, and then, and more you often can, than not, we yeah uh, they, yeah we get you. We got you. So, and but, then yeah. you can uh, keep what the first spin is, or go to another one. That's it. We're going to spin it. If you don't Who's like it, winner? too bad. You get what you get. Yep. But Who if you're here, it? you can look a gift gift horse in the mouth and, and, and throw take, it away. Take a grip sack instead of the shoes. Yes. Hypothetically. I, I want to see someone throw away a grip sack and then get the three-ball arsenal. That's what I want to see. Oh, that'd be perfect. That would, we, we had a three-ball arsenal winner. Because mo most often than not, I don't think we've ever seen someone get something better on the second roll. No, you're right. It's always been, oh, man. It's, al it's always been equal or less. Yeah, exactly. exactly. But anyway, the winner this week is? of the wheel spin is Robert Keller. Keller. Robert Keller, if you're around, check Here in in go. the chat. 90 seconds, Robert. 90, 90 seconds. 90. I'm watching the time, too. <laughs> I got it going. If you're here, time is ticking, check Robert. in. Waiting for you. Waiting for yeah. you. I see somebody named Robert raising their hand, but that doesn't. that's not the last name that I got here. Oh, it's Robert. Um, you know, you get So you get a half a spin, and you don't win anything. There he is. Hey, he's he here. is. He's here, Robert. 
Good deal. Robert almost broke the record. 25 seconds. Wow. Good job. Good job, Robert. There's no gift for that. It's just a, you know, <laughs> just a pat on the back. Pat on the back. But know. not actual, a real pat on the back, just a virtual pat on the back. Virtual pat on the back. Congratulations. Right. So we're going to spin the wheel for you. <laughs> And then you're going to think long and hard whether you want what we gave you. And then yeah. we're going to give you another chance. Are you ready? What are you hoping to win? I always like to ask, what are you hoping for? <laughs> <laughs> Either way, whatever you're going to get, it's going to get. You're going to get it. Here we go. Come on. Ready? Give him a three ball arsenal. I, I'm hoping for it. Come on. Hey, we haven't put given both those hands away. up. Put both don't, hands up, you cheater. Hey, don't tell me how to live my life. If I want to give him a three ball there. arsenal, I'm going to give him a three ball yeah, arsenal. That's what you're doing. I know what you're doing. If I can manipulate this wheel, I'd be a magician in Vegas, by the way. He's hoping for a grip sack, smart Alec. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said. Here are my he hands. Said he said that. I hope he you want a grip sack. Grip sack. <laughs> Here we go. It is. Oh, Ooh. a triple roller. No, no, like no, no. It, it didn't go over. It's still what? on. It's, it's oh, on clear magic. Man. It didn't clip. Oh. Oh, Glitter Magic, which is great is, cleaner. Right? Great ball cleaner. It's uh, plant-based, and um, and it cleans the balls. What do you want? You want the Glitter Magic, genius. or are you trying to go for that Grip Sack? I would go for the Grip Sack. Oh, I thought that went all the way over. I spoke out of turn. Uh, oh, see, if I was see. spinning the wheel, you would have won that, Robert. But you got the cheater <laughs> Nick over there. He stops it for the $29, the, the $9 gift, not the $150 <laughs> gift. Cheating bastard. Go ahead. Waiting on him. What do you want to do? Robert. Robert. Spin again. Spin again. Sorry. He's hacking it. up my lungs here. All right. Spin again, he says. Spin again. All right. Says, let's go. Spin again. Spin again. Here we go. Hands up. <laughs> <laughs> got one of those fake hands. <laughs> I, got, I got my double thumb. Come on. Triple. Uh, it's meant oh, to be. Come on, you gotta have it. There it is. <laughs> meant to right be. there. <laughs> meant to Glitter be magic. magic. So good luck next time, Robert. If you get picked again, I highly doubt it. But if you were picked again, good luck. Enjoy the clear magic. Um, next week we're gonna try to get Rudy Rebs on the show, Rudy Kazamakis. And um and then Nick will get working on the uh the new project. And then we'll have Steve come back on and explain what, what we happened. Did what happened and why it happened and we we are uh thank you steve again man it's always uh entertaining and and intriguing robert was so nice to thank us i wouldn't have thanked us if they had. <laughs> thanks for nothing <laughs> thanks for nothing danny that's what phil would have said <laughs> all right we'll see you guys steve thanks again thanks nick thanks for everybody for tuning in hopefully you guys like the information and we'll yep. be back with more we'll of it more, in the upcoming weeks where we right. find out if theory of the drilling numbers meets the expectation and reality of what the balls actually do. So we're going to find that out. versus reality. Get your swag inside. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't forget. They still they got to go somewhere to buy them. <laughs> I'll get the link up here. Put the interested. link up. You can go get them if you want them. Um, you know, the I invented that. <clears throat> This all one is a couple, a couple other ones, yeah. Yeah, yep. so all the shirts are up there. Um, Perception versus reality. Become a yep. super fan of the show. That way you can wear your gear in the pre-stream you know gang. What? Maybe we should have, if the guy wears the shirt when we pick his name, he gets an extra prize. How are we going to figure that out? <laughs> I, I think we should start putting a shirt on the wheel. Maybe take out. That's a good idea. Put something on the wheel. <clears throat> what, take out the like three-ball roller, three-ball arsenal. Put the shirt up in its place. That that's the new super prize. We're gonna replace new three bowling balls. The... <laughs> it's perfect. I like your idea. <laughs> well, you and I you like to pick chamois all the time, so I'm gonna take out one of the chamois. I think. Yeah, that's all right. Take out one of the chamois. Give me less of a chance to win. Nice. And put the t-shirt in. That's we'll a good see. idea. I like that. I know. All right. I invented that. Steve, thanks again, man. We'll see you. Thanks for having me. See you. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>